make sure that you have a good offer that people are buying already. And a funnel can amplify that. I wouldn't look through a funnel as a a one-stop solution for you that's going to change all your problems. I would just say like, it's a good amplification tool. And if you can't convert someone into your offer now, then a funnel isn't going to change that generally. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast, an auditory journey through the latest in marketing, branding, and advertising. Now, here's your Marketing Expedition Guide, Ray Allen. On this episode of the Marketing Expedition Podcast, I get to speak with Chris Benetti, who owns Smart Author Media and is an expert in book marketing. To date, Chris has helped his clients collectively generate over 20 million in sales from their books and digital offers. And in 2023, Chris sold over 19,000 books for his clients. Chris's mission is to make marketing and selling books easy to understand for business owners by educating them on the fundamental marketing strategies with a no BS approach. And we have fun talking about funnels and all the things that Chris does. So stay tuned for that. But first, it's time for your marketing essentials moment, the basics that you need to help you continue to build your brand and your bottom line. Today's topic, I wanted to go over a new study that Social Media Today has posted about on how the most effective LinkedIn post types are performing in 2024. So what is working in LinkedIn? Let's talk about the new types of things that you can consider putting in your social media strategy, including LinkedIn, because LinkedIn, as we know, is the most professional social media platform for business to business, for business to get done, to get jobs, to post jobs, to read articles like this all about LinkedIn. So first off, kind of an interesting thing that's happening with data, as we know, you can track it, you can measure it, you can use AI to help you understand and make data-driven decisions. And so what we're looking at here is Social Insider, and there's a 3.85% engagement rate, more so on multiple images in a LinkedIn post. So the multi-image post type scores the highest in LinkedIn engagement rate, meaning that people scroll through it in order to see what is the next image that they're going to get to see. So the engagement rate on LinkedIn has increased by 44% year over year. So posting multiple images in your social media strategy with the carousels, the, the, the ones that you can keep swiping over to see more, that is what you want to post in your images because then people are more likely to engage with it because they want to see what's next and what else you are showing with that multi-image post where those carousels are there. And of course, when you replicate them, you can post by doing a PDF because what's happening is when LinkedIn eliminated the native carousels as organic posting options, you can basically create a PDF that will display a different image each time you go. So you can't actually post carousels anymore, but those multi-image posts are really what's going to continuously build that engagement, followed by doing document posts or images and of course video. So then you can make it to where people will watch it. And then note also that when you are just having a single image and then you put links in there that drive you away from the social media platform that you're in, typically they don't always like to do that. That's why you're starting to see a lot more people put, you know, link in the bio or link in the comment. I should say link in the comments below because what's happening is they don't want you to leave their platform. In fact, LinkedIn will even say, hey, you're about to leave our platform. Are you sure you really want to leave our platform? Because we really don't want you to leave our platform because we want to serve more ads to you. (laughs) So getting around that is really posting the link in that first comment that's underneath the original post. So that way, if you do want to link out, you can, but don't put it in your original body of your, of your post, right? So it's just worth experimenting, kind of seeing how you can play it out. What makes a difference in your engagement on your LinkedIn? Now, of course, videos always post and can generate more shares. A lot of shares will happen when you post natively inside the platform itself. That's what that means to natively post inside the platform. But videos can generate the highest number of shares. 
So the median shares for LinkedIn video posts are at least three. And so if you're doing things that you can continuously do to do that, to get more engagement, to get more shares, those are some things that you want to consider. And of course, having quality video is really important, especially on LinkedIn, because it is the professional platform that you want to put your best foot forward. So emphasizing those videos on LinkedIn, having more opportunities for more videos or having a series of videos, those types of things can be really helpful. Another thing that is evolving is the posting frequency on LinkedIn. Average number of posts is 18 per month. And so in 2024, brands have increased their posting frequency on LinkedIn by about 10%. And that's a good thing because we want to have good engaging com you know, comments and things that are going to help with that. So if you consistently post on LinkedIn on a regular basis, start to find out when the most engagement happens on your posts. Um, we use a tool, we call it Pepper Post, that starts to understand your audience and will post at the most opportune time. So we don't even have to schedule it. It'll do it for us and take it away. And of course, using some <laughs> machine learning to understand when the most important times to engage are. And then thinking about which platforms and what types of posts you want to do for each of the platforms. It's really important to not necessarily do the exact same thing on all of the different platforms because you have a different audience and you react LinkedIn differently than you would say on X or formerly known as Twitter or Facebook for, or, or Instagram or Pinterest. All of these different post or different platforms have different methods of posting and ways that you want to do it because the algorithms are around each niche and the valuable content that you can provide on each of these platforms is, is unique to that audience that you've built in each of those platforms. So those are just some LinkedIn strategies that you can continuously perfect and refine and hone in and just remember, <laughs> measure what you treasure, right? If it's something that you want to see traction on, measure it. And then of course, measure what you treasure, dump what you don't, and automate what you hate. <laughs> All right, let's get into that interview. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition. I am your host, Ray Allen, and I'm the president and CEO of Pepper Shock Media and the founder of the Marketing Expedition community. And today's guest on the show, we have Chris. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Ray. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So Chris, I always just love to give you a moment to share a little bit about you and how you got to where you are today and you know all the, all the wonderful little things that people just need to know about you. Mm. Well, I've had an interesting journey to get to where I am today, as I think most of us have. <laughs> um, ultimately, I was in an iron ore mining industry out of high school and just hated doing that so much. But it um, helped me come to the realization that I needed to find more to be able to create the life that I wanted for myself and um and more look like entrepreneurship for me um and it was after reading you know rich dad poor dad and you know four hour work week and probably about 20 other books in the year of working away that i decided to go all in um and luckily enough i found russell brunson in the the end of 2016 and that led me into the world of sales funnels and digital marketing yeah. and all of that kind of stuff um yeah. i ended up transitioning from my job into an internship, a free internship with a local digital marketing agency because I was a newbie on the block and yeah. quickly became very good at sales funnels. And um, and in after about a year and a bit, I actually partnered with the agency owner that I interned for and we started you know, our own company together uh, focusing on sales funnels. And, you know, building sales funnels for clients, helping them get more results with their funnels that they're, you know, building with us. Um, and then, you know, just making sure that we can conversion rate optimize the funnels that we are building for our clients. Um, and then that, yeah, kind of naturally transitioned into smart author media, which is what I'm doing today. Um, and it was kind of out of the necessity and the, the hate of having to start from, ground zero every single month when we're just doing project by project, um, you know, kind of scopes. 
um, mm-hmm. and transitioning into like more retainer based stuff where we help people every single month with ads and getting, you know, we, we help um, authors sell books to get clients essentially. So that's an ongoing service that we can provide for someone. Wonderful, Chris. So I, the, the world that you live in, I mean, you really, you have to know what you're doing in order to get it to work correctly. And so I would just love to maybe just overview what are some of the the secrets that you might want to share? You don't have to give away the farm, but what are some things that people should consider if they have never done a funnel before and they're looking into it, they want to get into it? What are some things that you can share that might be helpful to somebody listening to this right now? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think first and foremost, you have to really like have a good offer to, to have someone come and buy um, so if you're a business owner and you've got a coaching program, you want to use a funnel to elevate that, you know, you already know how to sell that coaching program through potentially organic channels and, um, and other avenues like that, where you've kind of vetted it and have t- battle tested it and you know, kind of know how to convert and deliver. I think that's probably like the first thing, having a good offer that people want and validating that first, then a funnel is really a, a really great asset that you can have. Uh, for your business Um, and then on top of that you can then start looking at like advertising and things as well Mm -hmm. to just get out of the organic sphere you can go into the paid sphere and that essentially allows for you to amplify everything that you're doing Um, so just going back to yeah having a good offer Mm -hmm. I think the the key things to marketing from my perspective is um, understanding the levels of awareness of a potential uh, customer or lead and marketing to that level of awareness. So there's there's uh, five levels of awareness. I'll just cover the first few, but essentially mm-hmm. um, there's unaware, meaning like someone potentially has a problem. They don't even know what the problem is. They're not really f- focused on it. They don't understand anything. So those people are like very hard to market towards um, because you have to first educate them on the problem and then educate them on the solution and then educate them on the product and so on. Um, Then obviously we've got problem aware. So this is people who know they've got a problem and they're they're actively seeking out different solutions, but they don't know what it is yet. Then we have people who are solution aware, meaning they know what the solutions are in the marketplace, um, but they don't really know any providers. They don't know any people who offer the solutions. And then you've got um, obviously uh, 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 product aware, which is people who do know the providers in the marketplace. And, you know, I've got a good example of this right now. We're building our house and um, we want to put a whole house water filtration system on our house when it's done. Obviously, I know the problem is the water sucks. Um, typically, when you don't have a, a house filter on, um, that causes, you know, dandruff, it causes, um, skin rashes and all that kind of stuff. So I know the problems. Um, I know the solution is getting a a whole house water filtration system. And then I've also done my research onto who the providers are in the marketplace. So you can see at this stage, like I'm basically product aware. Um, and then basically there's, there's the fifth stage, which is most aware and that's everyone knows everything. Um, now when we do marketing, most people are, are at the problem aware stage um, for the most part, but it's it's up to you to determine if they are product aware, if they are solution aware, if they are product aware and so on, so that you can market towards them effic- efficiently. Um, and all of our sales page um, for our funnels and our ads and all of that kind of stuff ultimately should be um, written in that problem aware state putting yourself in the shoes of the potential lead or, or buyer and, mm-hmm. and essentially developing that content for them. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, beyond that, just making sure that when we're writing our ads in our sales page, that both things are congruent, they're saying the same thing, and ultimately they are portraying the same value so that people don't go from the ad to the landing page and go, huh, this isn't the same as where I just came from. Right. So when you were talking about what an offer like what makes it helpful in in all of this and like you said you're you're writing things in the problem aware stage what's an example of a good offer that could help lead the the people down the path that you want them to take in the funnel 
Well, um, books are great offers. Uh, <laughs> so I think, I think it's really just, you know, something that is um, a no brainer and obviously has tangible value. Um, so books for me, if like probably my number one favorite thing, it's what we market day in, day out, yeah. but you know, yeah. you can't argue with the value of a book if it's portrayed in the right way, if it's actually a good book and it's written well. Um, so running that as a, a kind of a front end offer to kind mm-hmm. of lead people into the funnel and, you know, potentially get them to work with us on as a clients, you know, in a larger scope in the future is, um, is a really easy way to kind of get someone through, um, uh, that, you know, other things that are good offers as well, um, any kind of like cheat sheets or, you know, templates and tools, mm-hmm. you can definitely charge money for these. You can also give them away for free. And that's also another good way to get leads into your kind of overarching funnel to potentially get them to work with you further. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it's just, it just comes down to how do we uh, portray value and have something that is actually helpful, you know? Yeah, no, it makes sense. And it's, it's getting them to pay attention to you long enough to then exchange for their email address, right? And building the list and then setting things up to where emails come through or other ways too, other methods of, of communication. But do you have maybe an example of a client that you worked with that you kind of went through this entire process with them and maybe just share us along the way, kind of some things that you did or ways that really helped that client be able to go through that process with you? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a, uh... Nigel Moore in front of me. Um, his book is called Package Price Profit. And he actually has a membership community for MSP people. And this is essentially managed service providers, people who do like online security for businesses. Um, and obviously, they're quite technical people. Nigel and I have been working together since probably April of 2022. And um, we give his book away for free in exchange for a digital download. So like it's a name and email kind of setup where we give the book as a PDF in exchange for their name and email. Um, Nigel's offer on the back end for his uh, book leads is essentially to get a trial of his community. Um, it's, It's a $47 per month membership. And the trial price is $7 for 14 days, essentially. Trial it for 14 days. Um, the, basically, the big hook that we give them on the trial page is download you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of templates and contract agreements and all of that kind of stuff and cancel and you can still keep it, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Oh, okay. So like mm-hmm. we're, we're just like, you know, we just go over the top with how do we portray the value of the membership Um, to get them in and then once they're in his retention is up in the high 90s so it's like 96 to 98 percent nice so um the trialers stay and the people who pay the membership stay as well for the most part um and we've given away about five thousand copies so we've got about five thousand leads in the past year and a half or so nice and um We've also got about 10% of those people to take trials with us, which is just a fantastic conversion rate. Um, Now, Ray, you mentioned doing follow-ups and all of that kind of stuff to continue to nurture and get them to reconvert onto the the main backend offer that we have. Um, That's good in theory, but my client doesn't (laughs) like writing emails and won't have anyone else write emails for him so um we've actually only got one email in our email sequence after we've got these five thousand leads through and it's delivering the book um (laughs) so all of the efforts to get people back to the trial page has been from an advertising perspective so Uh it's through the front end book lead ads and then retargeting people who have gotten the book to come back and trial the membership as well and that one two combo um, and literally just having ads as our avenue has been the the thing that's absolutely crushed it for us. Um, and we've we've probably spent about 75 grand on ads um, to get those leads. And we've made close to about 150,000 now 
um, and we have about 20,000 monthly recurring revenue um, built up um, just based on the, the trialers that have come through. So that $7, seven day trial or yeah, is that what you said? Yep. So a $7, okay. 14 day trial. Yep. Oh, seven, seven dollars 14 day trial. Those people, 90% of those people stay with the program. They see all the value and then they pay $47 a month in perpetuity or until they cancel Mm-hmm. Or until their credit card number declines, or I don't know. <laughs> Tell me like that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty, that's fantastic. I love that example. And like you said, now, if your client would want to do emails or do other things, then great. But you're mm-hmm. saying really then the ads that you retarget to those people who did the trial, you're, you're retargeting those people who are doing that 14 day trial or no, they're already in for good. No. So only the people who have gotten the book and not the trial. Oh, got it. Got the book. Yeah. Okay. But not the trial. I see. I see. Mm-hmm. And so when you retarget them because they've already given you the, your, their email address, then you can do ads that are specific to their domain or their email or, or, or something like that. Right. Um, we don't, we don't go too fancy like that. It's really just um, people who have visited the a specific page, but not another page. So like the, the order confirmation page. And then we just follow them around on Facebook and Instagram and just gotcha, basically gotcha. make sure that the trial offer is reminded to them at all times. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes sense. And that's just a simple like $1 a day kind of ad strategy. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need to spend much money on that. Um, yeah. obviously, you know, we, we probably drive about hundred, hundred book downloads a week or so. Um, okay. and we, like I said, we have about a, a 10% conversion. So on, on every week on average, we get about between eight and 12 trials for his membership. Wow. Okay, cool. And really those are the ads that start at first, because then you're driving people to get the book, to download the book first. And then you have like another second set of ads that are to retarget the people who got the book. So let's talk a little bit though about that first ad that they would see in driving them to get the book because that's where the offer is, right? That's the mm-hmm. that's where you're catching them. So tell me about what kind of offer are you seeing that's really working to get people to then want to download the book? Well, it's... Um... I'd I'd love to like make it complicated, but it's really not very, um, and (laughs) for the, for the most part, most of our authors, um, you know, we don't do many complicated offers on the front end. You know, sometimes we'll do a free digital download for the book. Um, Mm. I've got other clients here where we do, you know, free plus shipping offers. Like I've got this client here, we do a free plus shipping offer, which is, Hey, um, give us your name, address, phone number, and, um, you know, pay, just pay for the shipping and handling costs of the book and we'll send it out to you. You know, I won't charge you the $30 that we would usually, um, Mm. it's free and just pay $10 or something for shipping and handling. Um, and that's a common offer that we run in this space. Um, Mm -hmm. and so beyond that, you know, sometimes we'll have bonuses and other things that go along with the book. Um, Mm. but for the most part, Ray, to be honest with you, you don't really need to do bonuses and go above and beyond on like offer stacking things. Um, mm. uh, I think the resources inside the book are fine to list as bonuses on the page. And that does obviously add to the value. But like mm. I said, you know, when, we, when we're looking at books, books are one of those assets that are just the, the perception of value is already there based mm. on what other people have experienced with other books, generally speaking. Right. Like a lot of the books that my authors write, um, they're truly meant to give some fantastic content, but also allow for people to understand what the next steps are to work with them further. So, you know, when, when we're writing the ads, um, we'll typically ask um, a, a few sets of questions to build the sales page out for our clients. And then we mm. just repurpose that content for the ads essentially. And we don't really do anything complicated. Um, it, it's really just, you know, the, the hard work in running the ads for us is obviously when things don't work, that's hard. And figuring out that, you know, we have to do a lot of copy rewrites and um, mm-hmm. and different tweaks to things. 
Um, but when things do work, the hardest part is essentially testing new creatives all the time, building all the creatives to test, um, mm-hmm. changing up the targeting options to see if we get better results somewhere else, doing different campaign styles, continuously, you know, conversion rate optimizing the sales funnels and all that kind of stuff. Um, so from a general perspective though, when we have a client come through to write their, their sales page and their ad, um, we just ask them, you know, what are five things, uh, five reasons why someone should buy the book? What are 10 best things inside the book? Give me a summary of your book and give me an, a bio of yourself. And essentially that builds our sales page and we can essentially take the same content and write out ads with it. Nice. Now it's time for a message from one of our partners, Kitcaster. Did you know that podcasts are a great way to grow your personal and business brand? And Kitcaster is a podcast booking agency that specializes in developing real human connections through podcast appearances. We've had several guests from Kitcaster on the Marketing Expedition podcast as well. So if you're an expert in your field, have a unique story to share, or an interesting point of view, it's time to explore the world of podcasting with Kitcaster. You can expect a completely customized concierge service from their staff of communication experts. Kitcaster is your secret weapon in podcasting for business. Your audience is waiting to hear from you. Go to kitcaster.com slash expedition to apply for a special offer for friends of this podcast. So when you are, are doing this process and building out, are you the one that's actually building the, the sites then and like inside what's it, click funnels? Yeah, we're, we're not like Pat a platform agnostic, we, we kind of just, cho- you know, uh, allow for whatever platform the client has. Um, so, and if they don't have one, we'll recommend one. Um, I've been recommending a platform called Quick Convert uh, a lot yeah. lately, and that's quickconvert.io. Um, and that's essentially just like a cheap version um, of a funnel platform. You can build websites in there as well and do emails and calendar bookings and things like that. Uh-huh. Um, so, but yeah, for the most part, um, the, the, the sites and stuff like we will typically build those for the clients. Um, mm-hmm. but they're more than welcome to come to us with a funnel already. And then we'll just kind of do our quality assurance on the funnel, um, and just make sure that it's up to standards for us to advertise, um, which mm-hmm. is usually about a one to 1.5 week process. And then we kind of launch ads as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. And so you mentioned that it doesn't really cost a whole lot to do the ads to, you know, you spend a dollar a day or something like that nature to get people in your funnel or to retarget them. Let's talk a little bit more. You say you follow them on, you know, Instagram and Facebook, but I'm just curious, what are some things that you see that are working versus maybe some things that are not working anymore? Mm. Well, um, we, we definitely only spend a dollar a day on retargeting ads. Um, that's not really an expensive campaign to run, but for the upfront cold campaign, mm. we usually spend between 50 and hundred dollars per day for most of our clients. Um, we've got other clients who are spending several hundred, if not thousand um, dollars per day. Uh, but ultimately you need the, the kind of one to approach. You need the, the volume on the cold campaign, which is like new, new people coming through. And then you, you, don't need much budget on the retargeting campaign because it's just um, retargeting a, a, por- a small portion of people who have either mm-hmm. seen the landing page or have bought the first offer but not the second offer or something. Um, so it's just essentially just capturing the people who have made it through the first filter and just making sure that, that we can get kind of get them through the second one, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. But definitely what's, you know, what's working, what's not working. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I would say it's, it's, uh, you kind of put me on the spot here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, I would say, you know, what's, what's really important when you're running offers is, you know, as an example, the book offer, the one that, that works so well for mm-hmm. Nigel is because his membership and his book are congruent and, um, you know, they align. It makes sense for someone to get the book and then join the membership. Um, things that don't work. And I, you know, I can't see this being a timely thing. I think this is always going to be a fundamental is your front end offer or the first thing that someone gets from you, whether it's a a download of some sort where they just give you an email address 
um, mm-hmm. or whether they're buying something from you that's low priced, it has to align to whatever the next thing is, you know, what your main service or offer is in your business, whether it's coaching or consulting or doing services, there has to be an alignment because what mm-hmm. you're going to find is you're going to get leads that come through and want the first thing. But if it doesn't align with the second thing, then that's not a good lead for your business. You can get mm-hmm. good cheap leads all day on the first thing, but they probably won't convert into the second thing. And then that's a wasted energy and effort on your behalf. And, you know, I've run a couple of books, unfortunately, where this has been the case, but it's not until after we've run some ads that we determine that and kind of um, align those dots. And so Mm -hmm. I I would just say that that's like probably my number one fundamental is um, make sure that your front end offer or the first offer that you have aligns with your next offer um, and they're very congruent with each other and it makes sense for that someone to upgrade from the first thing to the second thing. So Chris, what, what advice would you have for somebody that is looking to create a funnel for the first time? I know we kind of talked a little bit about that process, but what would you tell them that they need to consider in working with you or anybody that can help build a funnel? But like, what are some things that you would suggest to them to be ready to do this. Oh yeah, so you, I mean, you have to, you have to be willing to put in the effort to help a provider, yeah. you know, develop the the asset with you. Um, there's a lot of people who will come and say like, "Hey, we'll do it all for you. Just do X, Y, Z for me." Um, mm-hmm. And you know, I'll admit that that's what we're like as well, but. Um, there's still sometimes a lot more energy and effort that has to go into it from the, you know, from, mm-hmm. for my case, the author, um, author's perspective, but also for the, you know, the offer owner's perspective. Like even if someone comes through and has a copywriter do all the copy for them, um, there's usually quite a lot of information the copywriter needs initially for their market research and to make sure that they're portraying the offers correctly and things like that so that they can build the best possible asset for you. Um, And so I would just say like, just be prepared to be as helpful as possible in the process, even if the provider tells you that they'll do it all for you and it'll be hands off. Like in most cases, there's still a need and necessity for you to kind of show up and and help out and give information mainly, and also provide potentially some assets as well, you know, like authority, assets like um, photo shoots and other things along those lines. Um, But beyond that, generally, I just, you know, I would say like, make sure that you have a good offer that people are buying already. And a funnel can amplify that. I wouldn't look through a funnel as a a one-stop solution for you that's going to change all your problems. I would just say like, it's a good amplification tool. And if you can't convert someone into your offer now, then a funnel isn't going to change that generally. So I would just say like focus on getting an offer that converts first and then like, hey, let's look to write a book as a front end and build a funnel Mm -hmm. around that or let's, hey, let's build an application funnel for our high ticket course or something that we're doing right now. Um, But it's it's essentially, again, it's it's just an amplification of what's working already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. So what kind of resources would you recommend for people to kind of learn or stay on top of this industry that you are in? What kind of, you know, maybe there's podcasts you listen to or things that you, you know, continuously look at to stay on top of it. Yeah. So, um, smart author podcast is mine. Um, and that's a really good tool for anyone who has a book and wants to put book funnel assets and advertising campaigns together. And basically I just like give as much information around what we do as a done for you service on my podcast Mm -hmm. for free. Um, So that's a fantastic resource that you can check out if you are an author or are in that avenue Um, from a, just like a general funnel and marketing avenue. There's a person named Gustin Sun um, and that's G U S T N S U N. um, And he's a really good, expert in the funnel category on Mm. YouTube. Um, And then lastly, I'd probably say another really fantastic person is um, Dan Henry, and that's D-A-N-H-E-N-R-Y. 
RY and he's really good on YouTube as well for like a lot of good marketing advice. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, he, he has a really good series on YouTube that he basically grills business owners um, and helps them figure out what's wrong with their marketing right now. He's not doing it currently, but that's like a really good masterclass. Um, there's quite a few different sessions on there and you'll get a, a ton of takeaways from that. Very cool. Well, where do you see yourself in the next, I don't know, six months, year, five years from now, doing more more and more, right? What's, what's, what's your future? What's it going to bring? Uh, definitely. I'm, you know, I'm all in here and I'm just going to continue to be all in. So for me, it's just continuing to grow our client base, continue to grow our team to support the clients and continue to get results for them. Um, you know, 2023, we, we sold over 19,000 books for our clients. Um, so, you know, I want to obviously beat that number this year and, and just, you do it with a a bigger team and, and more clients on the roster. That's awesome. How big is your team, Chris? Um, so we have four full-time team members, myself, number five, and then I've got two part-time team members, a part-time project manager and a part-time executive assistant. And you work completely remotely or do you have Everyone's office? remote, yep. Yeah, that's what I figured, yeah. I mean, you can do what you do for anyone anywhere, huh? <laughs> yes. Well, in fact, most of my clientele is in America, So, and I'm Australian. So, um, yeah, yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the accent there. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so I always try to ask people for my students. So I, I teach college marketing courses and love to give them some advice somebody that's maybe looking to get into your industry, what would you tell them if they're, you know, they're a few of them are graduating here soon. So Mm -hmm. what would you say, what kind of advice would you give to my students? Well, I have always found that working for free is the best entry to anything. Um, Even today I take on free projects um, because I really want to work with certain people. Like we're currently doing um, stuff for Ryan Dice, who's a really big internet marketer marketing his book and that's just because he's a he's one of those clients that could absolutely change my business so but yeah. when i certainly when i first started from um, the mining industry coming into digital marketing for the first time no degrees or anything but i just interned you know i worked for mm-hmm. free for uh, several months until i got a, a role with the company um and when i first started my business we had a hard time getting good clients on board so i did a free project for someone who was influential. And then we ended up working together for 12 months and she referred probably 500,000 in business to me. So, you know, um, working for free, I think is the best entry way. Um, I would just say pick an avenue or find an avenue that you think you might enjoy. Um, Work for free for someone to do that thing. For me, it was funnels. For you, it might be emails. It might be copywriting, might be advertising, whatever it is. And, um, and just go all in, give as much as you can, show up every single day and, um, and give it your all. And I think you'll be pretty pleasantly surprised on where it leads you to in terms of opportunities. Absolutely. Well, Chris, if people want to work with you, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, smartauthormedia.com is the best place. And there's a green button on that website. You can book in a chat with me if you want to talk about your book marketing If you're doing book marketing already, we can give you um, some tips to make it better. If you're not doing anything at all, then we can set out a plan for you together. And if you want us to help implement it, you know, there'll be an option for that as well. But um, by all means, it's it's really just a a consulting session with me. Um, So you're pretty much getting a thousand dollars worth of free value on that call. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for all of your wisdom that you shared today, Chris. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ray. It's been an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. And for those of you listening, the best thing that you can do is share this with those that you know that need to hear what Chris had to say today. And of course, give us that wonderful review that can help all of us. (laughs) And until next time, everybody, enjoy your marketing journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Want to continue the journey? Don't miss out on new episodes. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts.
Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in an online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.